say. My biggest fear as we enter the Web3 era is that we might just take a lot of the same social and economic problems that existed in the Web2 system and recreate them on Web3 technology, except just a far more powerful tech stack that has way more implications into every area of our lives, right? Which is a scary thought. Uh, I think this is possible because humans have a tendency to replicate cycles, right? If we don't become aware of the cycles that we're replicating, the, the narratives, the patterns that we're living out, uh, we tend to repeat them, right? Like if you, if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it, that kind of thing. I think that is very prevalent in the leadership in our world today. Um, and I think we're at a dangerous moment in time where we are not really critically thinking. We're actually trying to ignore and uh, shove away as much negative information or negative things that we don't want to think about um, you know, out of our collective consciousness. And, and I think that's very damaging because it leaves the door open for the leaders and brands that emerge in these new technologies that are going to shape the world again uh, and shape the world far more powerfully than anything ever before to, again, continue to act unconsciously, continue to replicate extractive business models, etc. And I want to talk a little bit about how this is possible, how these cycles replicate themselves uh, today on this solo episode. And I also want to talk about why I'm still really optimistic about Web3 as an opportunity to create economies of abundance and how we could possibly get there, right? What strategies, what spiritual principles we need to follow to actually create abundance and actually unlock human potential with this technology um, and you know, in this next decade as we have so much opportunity right now to do so. This podcast, Ascendance, and this brand is really about how brands and leaders are unlocking human potential, right? And how we're optimizing human potential because if we don't think about human potential or you know the highest thing that we can possibly achieve and we don't aim for that, we don't figure out what that is for us individually or for us collectively, you know, as brands, organizations, communities, then we're just going to keep optimizing for low things like short-term revenue growth, GDP, etc. And again, those are not bad things. Those are those are KPIs, those are performance indicators. Um, but we've organized our entire world around them, right? And when you do that and you don't have any greater spiritual purpose, you don't have any greater you know, spiritual goal to your organization and to what you're doing with your life, um, you, you tend to make money your God or short-term pleasure, um, but really usually we're organizing around money in the world today. And that's dangerous because then it just, like I said, it allows us to just keep replicating the same broken systems and then wondering why Oh, why is this still happening in the world today? Well, we never, we never really became conscious of the root causes behind that problem that we were supposedly trying to fix. And so we just replicated it again uh, unconsciously, right? And so I think for visionaries today, Web3 is an incredible opportunity. I think visionaries entering Web3 right now need to stop trying to solve all the problems in the world around them. And I say that as a very empathetic person who spent a lot of my early 20s like really just trying to figure out how I could do something meaningful with my life. Um, I had to stop trying so hard to solve, to, to go so deep into these problems, into these broken systems, uh, you know, whether it's the misaligned incentive structures of Web2 social media, whether it's, you know, political or civic injustice, you know, in my community, my hometown of Minneapolis, which has just a ton of a ton of problems right that are, are pretty obvious to the world after the events that happened in 2020 right um but if all we do is look at the problems of the past systems and, and try to solve them we're not actually ever going to transcend them right because i think the greatest opportunity we have to create a more abundant future is by making the old system obsolete by creating something that's so much better, so much more visionary, so much doper, um, and just economically more efficient, more abundant, et cetera, that the old system just goes away, or we, we take the pieces of it that we need, and the rest of it just dies off, right? 
Uh, because the more that we focus on problems, there's this concept in yoga, right? Drishti, it's, it's your gaze. Wherever your attention goes, your energy flows. The more that we focus on problems, the, the greater we magnify them and, and we're actually more likely to continue replicating them. Um, in yoga, wherever you point your drishti or your gaze, right, that's where, you're, that's where your energy is going to go. So if I'm in a pose and my gaze is on the floor, that might be a completely different pose and experience from my body than if my gaze is up over my extended fingertips and I'm, I'm really like stretching into that pose or activating some part of my body that I, I wouldn't be if I was just looking down, right? Uh, if we continue to look down, if we continue to just focus on and obsess over all of these problems, again, that we're seeing in the world around us, um, it's just gonna drag us down, right? Especially as, as visionaries are going into Web3, creatives, entrepreneurs, people who really wanna see like dope stuff come out of this space, problems be solved, human potential be unlocked. Um, we gotta stop focusing on problems and we gotta start looking for solutions, right? If you look at Elon Musk, for example, Elon made 100 mil off PayPal, right? So he, he found a way to come up to get resources to execute his vision. And then he decided to take on the auto industry and the space industry, two of the most entrenched and difficult industries to take on probably out of anything in the world. You know, energy maybe would be another one that's, that's difficult, but those two are like highest, highest, highest degree of difficulty, right? Um, space is was mostly government contracts, like billion dollar, multi-billion dollar government contracts, cost a lot of money, uh, very difficult. And then auto, you know, was incredibly entrenched politically and just infrastructure wise, like building a, a new auto manufacturer and an electric one at that, uh, you know, incredibly difficult. And if Elon would have focused on, for example, with Tesla, if he would have just focused on going into the auto, auto industry and trying to solve its problems. Like, hey, I'm gonna create a company that makes electric uh, motors and sells them to Ford and, and GE, and then eventually like, we'll make our own car and um, we'll, we'll solve these problems of emissions that we're seeing in, in the auto industry today and try to work with uh, the other people in the space and kind of navigate that landscape. If he would have just focused on the problems, right? Instead of being like, what is the dopest electric car that I can produce and get out onto the market and then how can I get as many of them out into the world as possible like he didn't even look at what the, old, the other auto manufacturers were doing he didn't even start with gas cars he's just like I'm going to create the most futuristic thing the dopest thing that makes everything they're doing obsolete and then like I'm going to stay in my own lane if they want to follow me great but if not I'm going to be so good then they're not going to be able to ignore me and so with Tesla I mean incredible feat um, of what he was able to accomplish. But I think part of the reason he was able to be successful was because he was solution oriented. He was visionary. He was pushing every, himself and everyone around him towards this more abundant vision of, of the future where there's more energy, uh, more clean energy, more like just dope cars that are fun to drive, uh, that are fully electric in the world. And, and he didn't focus on trying to go fix all the problems of the old auto industry he just built a he just built a version of it in within his container of tesla that was so much better than everyone else that literally every other auto manufacturer is now producing electric cars everyone is following him and he actually changed the game instead of just you know trying to play it right and so this is an important lesson for entrepreneurs especially as we get into web3 because like there are some incredible visions of what the future could look like, especially using blockchain technology, using this space. I am, I think we need to focus on those. We need to focus on like, how do we create the dopest MVP, the dopest products, dopest experiences for our web three communities. Um, and then just keep making those bigger and bigger and bigger. And hopefully, you know, the ones that succeed, they make the old system obsolete. They force all these Web2 companies to evolve, right? The same way Tesla forced GE and Ford and everyone else to evolve. I think if, if we can create something that's so much better, right, and get enough people to use it, 
That's how you shift the system. That's how you shift a paradigm. You create a new paradigm. You don't go try to fix the old broken paradigm. You create something new. And I think we're at a time where like we don't really we don't really have time to waste on problem oriented thinking, right? Um, we got to use like if, if you feel like you're supposed to bring something into the world right now, um, you need to follow the principle of letting the dead bury their dead, right? Jesus said, let the dead bury their dead. And he didn't mean let bodies rot on the sidewalk. He meant we as humans are so, so caught up all the time in taking the past, our our models of the past, our past emotional states, our past selves, and replicating those in the future, replicating ourselves in the future, that we never create anything new because we're constantly resurrecting all these dead things that we thought we left behind and, and we're never letting go of them, right? If you don't let the dead bury their dead, if you stop looking at all these problems and, and think of, you know, what are the gifts that I can bring into the world? First Peter 4.10 says, use the gifts you have received for the good of one another. Um, these spiritual principles are timeless, right? And, and they're very relevant for leaders today. Like letting the dead bury your, their dead means you stop caring about the fact that Google and Instagram are extracting everyone's data and are addicting people to their content, right? Great, they're doing, they're doing the best that they knew how to do in that old system. Let them do their thing and let's go build another one. Let's, let's fucking innovate and stop focusing on all these old broken systems, right? Yeah, there's a ton of social and economic injustice in America today, right? Uh, and people that have just been left out for centuries. And talking about it isn't gonna change it, but if we take action, if we actually envision like, what would it look like for the most under-resourced, the most broken down parts of our communities and in our cities, what would it look like if those actually became like the, the dopest parts of, of our city, right? Be, those became like the lighthouses for how we could transform our community, right? What would that look like? And then your mind starts to think about like, okay, well maybe we need to use, uh, maybe we need to use uh, some emerging technology to provide opportunity to like the kids in that community. Like my nonprofit, Smart North, um, is building a future hub a few blocks outside of George Floyd Square in South Minneapolis, one of the most under-resourced places in Minneapolis, in a, in a city that's very unjust as far as its educational outcomes and, and its wealth gap um, among different members of its community. You know, we're, we're not going in and trying to solve all those problems, but what we are doing is we're creating hubs in places that need them for teens, for youth, and just we're bringing in VR and AR, we're bringing robotics, we're bringing in, you know, other mental health resources and stuff that, you know, hopefully can actually create an environment where a kid who comes into that space might actually get to a place where they care about the technology and, and feel excited to do something meaningful with it. Um, that's a very small, like, microcosm and example, um, but it's, there is a lot we can do and a lot we can take action on today that is going to have a tangible impact, maybe not tomorrow, but five years from now, 10 years from now, we can literally transform, you know, a lot of physical and digital communities if we take that approach of, again, like, let's stop focusing on the problems, let's let the dead bury their dead, right? And individually, you know, uh, for ourselves as well, we need to keep evolving. We need to let all these old emotions go, this fear, this scarcity. Even, you know, for me, when I came up as an entrepreneur, um, I went into the entertainment space and found a lot of people who really were operating in a, this scarce, short-term thinking mentality, taking advantage of each other, fucking each other over. And, and I lost a, a lot of money. Um, and got taken advantage of when I was young and I was just starting out because I didn't, I didn't know how that game was played, right? For me, I mean, I, there was times when I basically had nothing, when I was virtually on the street it, it, except for, you know, friends and, and people in my circle who supported me, so thankfully I never was on the street, but, um, but I had some difficult moments. And for me now, getting to a place where I have more to work with, um, I could just replicate those same traumas on the people around me, right? I could I could just be in a scarce mindset and, and try to own everything and 
try to control, you know, uh, value and, you know, control flows of information and not help people um, because I've been traumatized, because I've been hurt, you know, in the business world. But it, if I do that, then I'm just replicating a cycle, right? I'm not actually practicing what I say I am in, in the sense that, like, I want to help unlock people's human potential. I want to create opportunities for others. Um, I can't do that if I'm just replicating these old cycles. So I have to let their, let the dead bury their dead. I have to let those old versions of myself, those old emotional states, old traumas, I have to let them die and keep looking up, keep looking to the future. And I think that's really the key of ascendance. That's really the key point of this whole brand is that, you know, we have to keep looking up, right? We have to respond to fear with love. We have to respond to problems in the world uh, with visionary solutions that make those problems that don't even necessarily address those problems all the time but make those problems obsolete because we just create something so much better right and with that approach i really do have a lot of optimism for web3 um, as a movement as a opportunity for digital ownership um, in a time where people are spending more of their lives in the digital world than the physical world i think that's it's incredibly important and if we can get enough leaders, enough young leaders who are driven to bring their abundant visions into reality, you know, whatever industry or whatever area that they're in, and to really have a higher spiritual purpose for their work um, and orient themselves toward that, not just optimize for short term things, um, you know, even if the people around them are, are doing that, are living in scarcity mentalities and and um, you know, even taking advantage of them, like you can't, you you can't create something better than what exists. You can't break the cycle, right? Unless you unless you keep going up and you and you just leave everything else behind, right? And I think that's the mentality that is going to get us, you know, away from that dystopian version of technology of the future, where you know we just recreate the same problems with far more powerful tech, and that is going to give us the opportunity to actually create a more abundant, more inclusive, uh, and just a far doper future where more people have an opportunity to access and activate their innate potential um, as opposed to being monetized, controlled, and exploited by technology platforms.